Hello, this is John from kevarprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at progress bars. So um, at the moment if I run this application we've got, um, when I click the tree, um, so let's just wait for it to start, it's thinking about it. I don't know why my computer is so slow today. If we go to um, the tree here, click this, we see this dialog which pops up and then disappears again and I'm going to put a progress bar in that dialog but actually first I'm going to fix one little thing because um, I must confess that in the last tutorial I actually showed you some code that had a little bug in it because if we look at the um, message panel here when it creates a dialog it does window.getParent but that actually returns null for reasons that I don't fully understand. And we're going to fix that by putting parent in here. And parent is going to be a JFrame, the actual parent window. And when I create the message panel in the main frame, I'm going to pass in um, this. And then finally, at the end of the chain here, in the progress dialog, I will use that JFrame for the parent. And I'm also going to do the um, same trick that I showed you before, which is uh, set location relative to here in the progress dialog. Set location relative to parent. Now I'm not convinced that um, dialog positioning actually works properly in Swing, but this is um, something of an improvement in that at least um, the dialog seems to come up basically in the middle of the window which I'm going to show you if I can get this working. Yeah, message panel. I need to add the import there to message panel. Save everything. And hopefully the errors will go away and I can run it. There we go. So now I'll move this um, application down a little bit and bring up the dialog. So at least now it's in the middle of the screen. Um, although whether it actually moves with this window, um, I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, we'll leave that because this is uh, pretty acceptable, I think. And um, I'm going to give this progress dialog here to private variables. Let's give it a private J button, cancel button. Um, and I'll also give it a private J progress bar, um, which I'll call progress bar. And in the constructor here, um, after adding the imports with control shift O, I'm going to set the cancel button equal to a new J button with the text cancel on it, which is going to be for cancelling uh, message retrieval in this case. And the progress bar I'm going to set equal to a new J progress bar. And um, here in the constructor I can specify a minimum and a maximum value, uh, but I uh, don't think I need to here because I'm going to set the, the default minimum will be zero. and. Uh, the uh, maximum I'm going to set later on as we go along. In fact, um, I'm going to give this a method public void set maximum, and that's going to take a int count. And with that count, it's just going to say progress bar dot set maximum set maximum. And what that does is it sets the um, the numerical value of the progress bar that corresponds to 100% complete. So it could be 100 or 1000 or 10 or whatever you like. And um, although it is an integer actually. And then I'm also going to give it a, let's maximize the editor here, a public void set value, very important. Um, I'll give that a value. I don't know why I call this count actually up here. Let's call this value as well. And then the value is just going to do just going to do progress bar dot set value, and that's going to set the current value of the progress bar, um, and of course, like the maximum value. When this value here reaches this value here, then you'll have 100% progress. So uh, there's a few other things to do. I need to add these two controls to the dialog. I'm going to get rid of set size here. I'm going to do set layout and I'm going to set the layout to a new flow layout which is the layout manager you might recall that just lets you um, add components from right to from left to right and you can't even uh, do vertical layouts with flow layout 
It's purely a horizontal thing. And I'm going to do add um, progress bar and add cancel button here. And um, I'm also going to resize the progress bar so that it has the same height as the button. And to do that, I'm going to say um, size, uh, actually dimension, um, and I'll call this size. And I'm going to set that equal to the size retrieved from the cancel button, the, the preferred size. I'll say cancel button dot get preferred size. And then, after adding the imports, I'll do size dot width equals 400. And I'll do progress bar dot set preferred size. So we've got the size from the button so that we can get the height of the progress bar the same as the button. But of course the progress bar is wider um, and so I've set the size to wider before doing set preferred size on the progress bar. And finally after adding these two controls I'm going to call pack. And pack sort of shrink wraps your um, frame or dialogue around the controls that you've added so it will make it a minimum size for these two controls. Uh, now we can wire, wire this into our message panel. I've already got the instance variable here and the dialog already appears and disappears at the right moments. Um, but I'm going to also set the value. So let's go to retrieve messages here. Let's get rid of this um, text um, sysout stuff because we don't need that. And in process, which is the method that um, the publish method um, ultimately invokes, uh, as we saw in the last tutorial. I'm going to say uh, progress dialog dot set value retrieved, and um, that's going to set it set the progress according to the messages retrieved, the number of messages re retrieved, and we also need to set the maximum up here. So here I'm using message server dot get message count, and uh, let's say. Uh, progress dialog dot set maximum. So the maximum value here will be the total number of message messages that are waiting to be retrieved. And um, I think that's just about ready to go now. Um, so let's let's try that and see how it looks. So if I run this and it's not yet going to be perfect, but if I run it. Um, then uh, we see that we've got progress indicated here. And by the way, if you don't know what the maximum value is um, of your of the kind of thing that you're doing in the background, you can set progress bar set indeterminate true. And an indeterminate progress bar basically um, looks like this. So it shows that something's happening, but it doesn't give an indication of when it's going to finish. Anyway, we will use a, a determinate version here, which is the default. Now, um, there's uh, there's one thing that I'd like to do here, actually, which is that um, I'm calling Swing Utilities Invoke later to show the dialogs to, to make it visible, because you might recall from the last tutorial that if we, if we don't do that, doing set visible on a, mo on a modal dialog just causes everything else to be suspended and nothing else can happen. Um, because this will not return until the dialog goes away. But I'm going to take this and copy it. And in my progress dialog here, um, I'm going to override. I'm going to go to source, override implement methods. And I'm going to override in dialog the. Uh, I'm going to override the show method here. I think that's the one I want. And um, in here, uh, not show actually. Sorry, I'm talking rubbish. I'm going to override. Um, show is actually uh, deprecated. Um, what I, what I want is the set visible, which is the newer way to do show on a dialog. So I'm going to find set visible, which I know is in here somewhere. Yeah, it's in dialog actually. And um, where are we? Set visible, set visible. Here we go. Let's override set visible. And in there, I can put this sort of threading code um, and I can set the visibility here. Um, let's call this visible and let's paste that in here as visible. 
and I need to invoke the super um, the super kind of um, progress dialog method so I, I, I sorry not the um, super the um, this we're in here we're in a dialog that extends J dialog and in my overridden set visible I don't want to invoke set visible itself I want to invoke the super class set visible and to do that I need to say um, I think I need J um, well actually I could write um, so I need to name the class progress dialog progress dialog um, and I, I don't want to use this what I want to use is super so progress dialog dot super and also to access this variable here in this um, method of a uh, anonymous class I'm going to have to declare the parameter here final um, and then that should all work I think so let's let's take a look at that now actually I've got to take the multi-threading stuff out here so now I can remove this from here and I cannot worry about that here because it's now built into the dialogue which makes a lot more sense uh, there's one other little thing that I want to fix here in this tutorial so if we look at this dialogue now it looks pretty good and it works um, but um, you often don't quite see it see, see it getting to 100% although having said that well um, one thing that we need to fix actually is let's get rid of these applications is um, we need to make sure that when you show the dialogue that it's initialized to zero progress so let's go to the show method in this progress dialogue and let's say um, progress bar dot set um, value and let's set that to naught right here and now let's see how this looks and so I tick something on so it's zero to start with and then it finishes um, now one thing that um, you often find with progress dialogues um, uh, is that uh, annoyingly they never seem to get to 100 um, because this, the split second it reaches 100 it then disappears and to fix that well there's all kinds of ways you could fix that but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tinker with this um, set visible method and I'm going to put in a little delay before it um, before it disappears so let's say uh, here if um, visible um, actually uh, w whatever we do if, if I put a delay in here um, if I were to put here a thread dot sleep that's going to hold everything up um, until it finishes sleeping so we wouldn't we won't see any progress on the progress bar because nothing's going to happen until this thread dot sleep would expire but if I put it here in um, the run method of invoke later it's going to achieve what we want so I can say if visible uh, equals false so it's been set to disappear let's have a little delay let's say thread dot sleep and let's try 500 milliseconds and see how that looks I'll just handle the interrupted uh, exception there and I'll, I'll leave that as it is, it's not too important because um, it shouldn't really be happening um, at the moment so let's run this and um, click this and now with a bit of luck um, in fact that perhaps wasn't quite enough let's change it to 1000 um, I think that should work, this all looks Okay, so we're sleeping just a little bit before setting it invisible. Um, let's run that. And now my clips has got slightly in my way. Okay, let's go back to this. Quit that. Let's uh, make the console visible here. Run the application. And keeping my fingers crossed here that this should work. And in fact, it doesn't because um, I don't actually know why ah uh, yeah because um, we're calling set visible and I've, I've got this I put this uh, set value equal to naught in so it's trying to hide the progress bar and it's doing this straight away so I really want to get rid of that right there and I only want to set the progress to zero if it's being shown rather than if it's being hidden now 
I think we've nailed this, and I'd really like to because progress bars are so tricky. There we go, that looks much better. Let's try this. Okay. Very nice. Okay, so um, that's it for this tutorial, and in the next tutorial, we're going to look at making this cancel button operational. So join me again then, and until next time, happy coding.